The title of her message would simply be this. The church, 85 deals with, with just this. And uh, the title of her message would simply be this. The church and revival. The church and revival. And we read to you verse number 1. Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin. Selah. Now we know when we come to that word in Scripture that we need to stop and pause a minute and grab hold of what the Lord is saying, what He has said, and what God wants to speak to us through the Scripture. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin. Salah. Amen. I'm glad God has covered our sin. Amen. I'm glad that He's a forgiver of sin. No matter how big or little we think it is, God still forgives sinners. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God, of our salvation and cause thine anger toward us to cease. Will thou be angry with us forever? Will thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? God, would you revive us again that God's people might rejoice in thee? Now we said here today a congregation of people that are every one of us were out in the world when we leave here. Tomorrow you go back to your workplace or your job or your home <coughs> or school or wherever you're going. You go, you're thrown right back into the process of this world. And this world has no hope without God. This, whole, this world, friend, if you're looking to this world for your hope and your blessings in life and your way of life, I'm sorry for you. This world is not the home of the believer. We are just passing through, amen? But we live in this world and we have a presence in this world. And in this world, our lives must count for the Lord. We must look for better than this world's got to offer, amen? If I look around at the world and all that is going on in it and try to build a hope and try to build a life on what this world is, friend, I'm not going to do any good at all. But if I look to the Lord and I trust Him and I truly believe with all my heart that the Word of God is what we stand upon, what we believe, what we trust, and I do that and I go about my life to live after this blessed book, friend, I tell you, I'll have a good time going through my life as a believer. Now, listen, I'd be crazy to stand up here and say everything with our country as well. It's not. But I do want to tell you this, we may be headed for some times of persecution such as we have never seen before in our, in our history, but I want to tell you this also, God's able to deliver, amen? God's able to help us and God will keep us. And I'm not all doom and gloom, I believe, thank God, that Jesus is coming soon, amen? But you know what I want to be when Jesus comes? I want to be revived, amen? I want to be on fire for the Lord and serving Him. And, do, and I want to be the pastor of the church that's revived. Amen? What does revival mean? What is it? This word rendered revival means to live, to cause to live. The idea is that of recovering from their condition as a state of death. That is restoring them as if they are dead. And that's the image of that returning spring after the fall of the year. And after winter, when all is dead, I like the spring. Everything died during the winter time. The leaves are gone. The grass is brown. And uh, everything looks, looks gloomy. But when springtime comes, revival sets forth in nature. And suddenly it's blooming again and it's green again. And all is well in nature, it seems like, when spring has come. The bears are revived from their deep winter sleep as they lay there as dead during the wintertime. 
heart barely beating, blood barely moving, just enough to keep them in existence till springtime comes. And then they're awakened, they're grouchy, but they woke up and they got out of bed and, and revival has set forth over that dead animal. You know what churches are like? Many churches are dead today. They have no life about them whatsoever. And I'm telling you, we can kind of conjure it up all the way we want to. We can do what we want to do to try to build it up. But if revival doesn't come from God, our church will never see revival. This nation will never see revival if it doesn't come from above. Amen? Revival's not going to come from me. I can have evangelist after evangelist in here to preach to you a series of meetings and not one of them is going to come in here with revival in their back pocket or in their briefcase. Revival will come when God's people are humbled by Him, when God's people humble themselves before an almighty God and say, Lord, I want to do what it takes to have revival. God, will you not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in the Lord? Everybody smile at me real big, will you? Y'all look like I'm beating you with a stick. I'm just telling you, hallelujah, I'm just telling you what it takes to have revival. I'm a little bit excited today, amen, because I see the possibility and I see that what God wants to do for our church and for our nation. You say, preacher, we've gone too far. Hey, as long as you've got that idea, hey man, you might as well give it up and throw in the towel. But I don't believe for one minute that God no, don't have the ability to send me revival. You notice I said me, amen. If you believe that same way, God in heaven can do things for you that you didn't think possible. If we'll trust in the Lord. The great preacher, R.A. Torrey, I read after him. He had a prescription for revival, and that was simply this. And I'm quoting here, I can give a prescription that will bring a revival to any church or community or any city on earth. Boy, it, doesn't that sound good? Doesn't that sound good that someone's got a prescription for revival? We can go to the doctor and we get a prescription for anything we want. And most of the time they'll give it to you and you don't have to do much to get it. If you're sick, they'll give you something to make you better. If you can't sleep, they'll give you something to make you sleep. If you can't wake up, they'll give you something to wake you up. If you feel bad, they'll give you something to make you feel good. If you're hurting, they'll give you something to either relieve the pain or make you not care. Amen. You can go to the doctor and get a prescription for about anything, but I want to tell you something. You can't go to the doctor and get a prescription for revival. You can't go to the government and get a prescription for revival. You can't go to me and get a prescription from the Bible, but there is one, and here it is. Number one, let a few Christians, parentheses, they need not be many, get thoroughly right with God themselves. A handful. Just a few to get right with God themselves. And what I mean, when I, I'm, I'm saying put aside sin, Put aside hateful thoughts, put aside malice, put aside greediness, put aside all that in your life and give your life solely to the Lord Jesus Christ and fully surrender to God and say, Lord, here I am, use me. Do what you want to with me. God send revival. There's where the big, biggest roadblock is to most Christians in having revival is we don't want to surrender to the Lord. Now, if I don't get some amens, I'm going to have to conjure them up myself here now. You know I'm telling you the truth. The biggest, the biggest uh, dead end to revival in the local church is that God's people are not willing to get right with God and surrender themselves fully to the Lord. You know why? Because the first thing the devil says is, well, you're going to have to give up this that you enjoy in the world. Yeah. If I surrender myself to the Lord and I want revival, then I'm going to have to quit doing this. I'm going to have to quit doing that. You'll find yourself much better off if you give up those things anyway because that's only temporal pleasure, whatever it might be in your life. You all know how much I love to enjoy going fishing, don't you? And there ain't nothing I like better than being on the side of a tree somewhere in the cold air 
waiting for that one to come along that I can put on the plate. Amen? He's got things growing out of his head, and, and I'm looking for that one, and I love doing that. But I'll tell you what, friend, we get whatever pleasure you have in life. Maybe, you know, maybe it's a sinful pleasure you have in life, and you're going to have to give it up. Are you willing to do that for revival? Are you willing to give it? Now, I'm not saying the Lord ever asked you to give up your hunting and your fishing. That's pretty clean stuff. But I'm talking about maybe the sinful pleasures of life that you so enjoy that you know what they are, and I don't have to name them because God will deal with your heart about it. I'm telling you, friend, are you willing to give up that sinful way to have revival? Complete surrender to the Lord. The prime essential is that we have ourselves given to God and if this is not done, the rest that I am, I am to say will come to nothing. All right, Tori. Second of all, let them bind themselves together in prayer to pray for a revival until God opens the heavens and comes down. Listen, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven will forgive their sins and will heal their lands. The first, the first thing in, in a, after getting right with God, the second thing of a prescription for revival is to do this, humble yourself before God and pray. How many of you prayed all you wanted to pray last week? Raise your hand. See, I'm telling you, friend, we're missing out on revival by not praying and asking God for it. We're missing out on revival by not uh, having ourselves right with the Lord so that we can pray to a God in heaven. Amen. Well, hey, you're wasting your time if you're trying to pray with sin in your life. Give that up. It ain't going to work. You're not going to get through to God, and you're not going to have revival. And I challenge you, and I challenge me today, may we get our hearts right with God that we might see our need for revival and that we might turn to Him. Thirdly, let them... Uh, put themselves at the disposal of God for Him to use and see as He fit, as is fit in winning others to Christ. Are you, oh preacher, I can't, I can't talk to people. Let me tell you something. I know a young man that goes door to door in his community and witnesses for the Lord and expresses his desire to help missions, and he receives money for missions door to door. He's got a desire that somebody gets saved. Amen. I'm not going to call his name out. He's here today, and I'm not. If he wants you to know, amen, you can tell you. But I'm telling you what, we need that desire in our heart that we would see someone saved by the grace of God. They're going to hell, friend. Does anybody care? They're going to hell. Does anybody care? I'm telling you. We need revival. I got studied some on revival. You know, you remember? Most of you do. I'm not that old. Many of you are older than I am. Do you remember when the preacher would call a revival service and he never called it for a week? It was a protracted meeting where we're calling this revival service for two weeks. Anybody remember that? You know why they would call it for two weeks? Now, I'm sorry of my, for my ignorance, and you all probably know this. I didn't know this. But I never, do you, sister, do you ever remember a, a revival meeting going on at Brown Chapel? didn't last two weeks hardly. And a lot of, a lot of times they're protracted meetings longer than that. It'd go on for three, four weeks. That was a good old day. No, that was the days when people wanted revival. You know why they'd, they'd have the first week, and you know what would happen? God's people would get revival. God's people would get stirred up. And you know what happened on the, starting on the second week or maybe toward the end of the first week, and from that time on, God's people revived would go out into the community and bring lost ones in, and they'd get saved by the grace of God. That is a result of revival. It's when we're seeing people saved in our churches. When, we're being, when we are ourselves witnesses of them and having a concern in our heart that people are going to spend eternity in hell and they're going to live there forever and forever and forever with all their 
uh, their senses, with all their touch and their feel and with all their mind about them, they're going to be in hell for all eternity. But do we care at all? Our hearts have been so seared and our hearts have been have been so become so unburdened for lost people that we don't see them where they're going. And when they die and leave this world in hell, they'll lift up their eyes if, they, if they've not been born again by the grace of God. And again, do we really care? Now, This recipe for revival is sure to bring revival to any church or community. Brother Tory says, I have given this prescription around the world. It has been taken by many churches and many communities, and in no instance has it ever failed. My friend, I'm telling you, if God's people, if somebody in this church I, re I remember in times past when the ladies would get together once or twice a week and go to the church and pray, come back home. Men would gather and they'd go to the church and pray. Two or three times a week, just pray. Pray for revival. God answered that. I wonder if there might be some of you ladies or men around here that say, I, you know what, I think I'll just go to the church and pray for ten minutes today. Call your friend up, call your neighbor up, say, you want to go to church and pray with me? I'm telling you, friend, prayer brings revival. The lack of prayer means there's no revival. We must pray and call upon the Lord. Are you willing to sacrifice a little time in praying and calling out to the Lord? Wilt thou not revive us again? Wilt thou not revive us again? Now, this is my introduction to a message that I'm quitting on right here. I want to ask you something. Are you willing to have revival in your heart? Do you really, how bad do you, revival will come when we want it bad enough? I'm telling you, friend, if we desire it and God will burden our heart for it and we begin to do what God wants us to do and pray and seek the face of God, you'll see a change in this church. You'll see a change in this community. All because God will honor us with the revival spirit. Now look, I've got some I've got some amens out of you. I've got some strange looks. I've got some happy faces. And I'm not by all any stretch of the imagination saying today that we're cold and as last year's burden is and dry. But I will tell you this, I need revival. And I believe with all my heart you need revival. And I believe we're at the door, at the threshold of having a revival if we will just pray and seek the face of God. Father, Lord, maybe next week you'll let me finish the message, but right now, God, we're through. I believe, God, we've said all that you want us to say today. I pray right now, Lord, that you'd send revival. God, help me. Forgive me of my sin. Oh, God, may I put those things out of my life that would hinder me service for the that would hinder me and not ha and, and not having revival God as we confess before thee today God our sins are many but God we want revival and I pray God you'd help us to walk in that straight way that plain path Lord I pray if there's someone here today that don't know you that's lost God will you touch them God today with the spirit of conviction and God that they might come to know you before it's too late We'll bless you and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.